Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. So I was out on the porch the other day and I feel something crawling up my leg. I look down, Whoa. spider. <laughs> I don't react well to spiders. Uh, so with the weather warming up, that means it's time for me and for you to get in touch with Southeast Termite and Pest Control as the creepy crawlers are now going to be out and about. Keep them out of your house by calling Southeast Termite and Pest Control in the area for more than 40 years. That's, I've got sponsors on this show uh, repeat, who've all been in business for four decades. That doesn't happen unless you're a really quality business. Southeast Termite and Pest Control definitely is. All right, um, I'm tired of this lawsuit. You guys tired of this lawsuit? Let's quickly run through what happened in case you're not familiar with what happened this week and what's coming this week. We'll quickly buzz through this. First of all, the plaintiff's attorneys said Friday that Tennessee has yet to prove that its witnesses would be burdened by a trial in Nashville. The suit was filed in Nashville. UT wants it in Knoxville for jury-related reasons, obviously. The plaintiffs want it to stay in Nashville for the same jury-related reasons, though they say it would be too, too traumatic for the Jane Doe's involved to return to Knoxville for a trial. This is all about is your jury going to be made up of all fans or Vandy fans? That's what you're looking at. All right, uh, second, Tennessee has filed a motion, its own motion this week, to dismiss the claims of three different Jane Doe plaintiffs, and those are claims involving Emmy Mack and Jula and Alexis Johnson, current football player. They're asking to throw those two and another situation out of the case. Next, the plaintiffs added more to their lawsuit this week, this time regarding an alleged sexual assault involving a football player. The alleged victim is not a plaintiff, but the attorneys are adding that case to simply throw another log onto the fire. A police report will be released tomorrow, and the player's name will, become, it will come out even though no charges were filed and the player wasn't suspended from Tennessee's football team. The player's attorney said no evidence of any kind has been found to implicate this young man in any wrong doing. That part is a real shame. Nothing's there criminally, but here's the deal. They keep throwing things onto this. We keep saying, well, but this one wasn't criminally charged. This kid wasn't charged. This one didn't go to trial. Uh, there's no evidence here, but we're talking about preponderance of evidence in terms of this case. Seems obvious to me that what they're trying to do is be able to walk in front of that jury and say, here are eight million stories and hope that the jury goes, something yeah. had to have gone on here. That has yes. to, that's, that's clearly their, their target. Well, I think you, you phrased it best, another log on the fire. And from what I heard reported about the, the name that's going to be released, was it wasn't just Knox County Sheriff, UT cops, it was TBI. This thing has been cleared all the way through just about every law enforcement agency that could touch it. And it was even cleared by the University of Tennessee. And I think the fact that this kid's name is going to be thrown out there when nobody, as his attorney said, found any evidence he did anything wrong, I, I think it's a shame for him. Because we all know how we're in the media. We know how that works. Your yes. name's out there, and half the people are better just go, yep, he did something. Yes. I mean, that's just, as soon as you read the headline that somebody's attached to something ugly, that is what people believe. Yeah. And they're never going to believe that anything's cleared. Your thoughts on this latest log on the fire? Well, I, I just think if any anybody says they're tired of it, or a lot of people thought they were tired of it two but, weeks ago, it's just going, there's going to be more yep. logs on the fire. That's the strategy. Yeah, it's, it's, they're putting pressure on, it's twofold. One, if it does go to trial, which these, the plaintiff's attorneys don't want to spend three no. years in litigation on this. And I was told by someone at UT that they're expecting two years minimum, three years probable in terms of how long this is going to go. They're, as we said a couple weeks ago, they're locusts. They want to make their money and move on to the next case that they settle out of court. But the problem is they're also, in terms of trying to get the jury ready if it does go to trial, in terms of getting them to say, there's just so much here, there, there's so much smoke, there has to be fire. But they're also, the more you trickle out, the more it makes Tennessee pop up in the press nationally, which looks worse and worse for the Vols. And that, of course, ramps up the pressure on UT to settle. Chuck, your thoughts on the latest? Uh, well, I think at some point the other shoot, the shoot of fall is going to be a countersuit just based on uh, defamation of character or something like that. And in trying to have this in Nashville, I guess the, the plaintiffs are assuming a trial there. You could actually find 12 Vanderbilt fans. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, the, uh, the, the interesting thing with Brown, and Brown University had a situation in terms of lawsuits. Kid was kicked off uh, off campus because he was accused of sexual assault. Turns out he, he wasn't charged with sexual assault or wasn't found guilty. He not only sued Brown for kicking him out, the university, 
He also is apparently, though both names are redacted, it, the, the, the case matches this other case. Uh, he's also suing the girl who accused him of sexual assault. So as John Adams wrote in the Sentinel today, you're now yeah. to the point, if you're UT, where you know I, we've given credit, I've given credit to Butch Jones for acting quickly. I mean, more so than any coach I can remember over there, mm -hmm. when, when there's a discipline issue, he drops the hammer immediately. And, you know, it's a suspension. You see where it goes. But he's great that way. As John Adams wrote in the Sentinel today, you may not want to do that because now you can be sued on the other end. Yeah, so, starting to swing back yes. the other way. The, uh -huh. the Yale basketball story is another example. I think John mentioned that as well. Yeah, but yeah. It, this latest law is another example as well of the coverage of all this has changed, right? And that's part of their plan. Yes. The, the names come out whether someone is charged or not. That used to not be the case, right, in, in the way that this was was covered so that allows the smoke to start filtering out more as well creates more conversation one bit of positive news if you're a Tennessee fan some interesting stuff that's going on let's go ahead and go back to the bullet point four if we've got it in that last graphic there we go uh, pair of senators at least two one of them Lamar Alexander another one from Oklahoma James Lankford they have been taking some recent shots at title nine memos the memo that caused much of this lawsuit stuff to pop up around the country. In 2011, as we discussed here a month ago, uh, the Office of Civil Rights within the Department of Education sent out a memo reminding schools that it's only a preponderance of evidence, not the typical criminal court standard in terms of reacting to a sexual assault on your campus. Uh, Senator Alexander and Senator Lankford are both questioning the Office of Civil Rights saying, okay, what kind of power does this memo have? because everyone's treating it as law and it's in the, the Office of Civil Rights. Dealing with this can't really give a clear answer. As we've said before, and this is true in most things in life, the idea is good. Nobody wants sexual assaults. Nobody wants sexual harassment. The implementation is often so flawed, especially when you involve the government. But in any walk of life, when you say, this is a problem and I'm going to fix it, inevitably the fix hurts somebody. And this fix by the Department of Education on Title IX, this memo that went out in 2011, has people running scared because they don't know how to handle it. It's not clear language. And you finally got some senators who are pushing back a little bit. So that's one to watch. Too late for Tennessee, but it might impact change that would impact schools moving forward because you better believe more schools are going to be looked at like this, already 100 dealing with lawsuits of this kind. All right, when we come back, Tennessee basketball. I'm watching the NCAA tournament. You're looking at all these name programs. Tennessee's got the arena, they got the fans. Why is Tennessee not a name program? We'll discuss, come on back on the sports source.